All right, so let's take a look at this little animation I put together. AE and C4D rocks. Kind of a cool little animation. And what we have going on here is we've got some 2D elements and some 3D elements. And everything's casting a shadow, including the 2D elements. And what I really want to drive home here is the fact that we have the 2D element going in between the 3D elements. Now, you may be saying to yourself, well, Chris, that's no big deal. I could do that with an object buffer. Put an object buffer on the AE in Cinema and do it that way, which is true. You could do that. But the fact is, that's not what I did. Basically, what I've done here is I've gone into Cinema 4D and I put these on individual layers. So everything's on its own layer. The AE's on its own layer, C4D is on its own layer, the background and floor is on its own layer, as well as rocks. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at. This thing took a little longer than the time that we have for this tutorial to put together, so I'm not going to start from scratch. What I'm going to do is just go into the files that I already have set up and sort of show you what I did. From a time standpoint, that makes more sense. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D, and let's just go through and see what we have here. For the rocks to be split up like that was really simple. All I did was create the text element right here, and then I duplicated that and fractured it with a fracturing plugin called Explode. Now, there are many fracturing plugins out there, so just take a look, but Explode, X P L O D E, is a pretty good one and it's fairly inexpensive. If I just come out of this camera view here, I can show you what that looks like. So if I turn on the visibility of that, you can see that that's my exploded rocks. And all I've done is keyframe the visibility to turn on and off. So when it gets down here, it turns on, and this one turns off, so it gives the illusion that this is just split up. It's just that simple. Now, of course, I have put the Dynamics Engine on this to cause it to fall and break apart. So what I'll probably do in case you're using C4D Lite is go ahead and just convert this to keyframes so that you don't have to rely on the Dynamics Engine. All right, so basically that's how that was put together. So I've got three lights. The top one is casting a shadow, an area shadow. That's where we're getting our shadows from. Do a quick render, you can see that. And then what I've done for the AND, and when I say AND, I'm talking about the After Effects ampersand that comes in, is I have created a plane. The visibility is off right now. Let me go ahead and turn that up and off so that you can actually see it come in. I've just keyframed that in. So it's just a plane. But what I've done is I put an external compositing tag on that. So that information will go over into After Effects. Because really all I want is the position data, so that when I go into After Effects and put my AND sign in there, it's going to follow this same path. So I have the external compositing tag on there, and then I've turned the visibility off, so that we don't see it in the main render here. So let me go ahead and turn that back on, and turn the visibility off. So you can see that. Now I guess the most important thing to take from this is that I have separated all this to the individual layers, and that's what these color codings are. Each one of these represents a layer. So if I go to my layers here, you can see that C4D is represented by this orange color, AE by the green, background by the yellow, and the rocks by this purple color. And in order to put something on a layer, you just right click and go add to layer. Now if you've already got layers created, it'll give you the option to add to a layer. If you don't, you can just say add to new layer. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Now let's go ahead and jump over to After Effects and take a look at this and see what we've got going on here. So if we look down here, let me just turn off the motion blur for a second here. Let that calculate. I have all of my Cineform layers down here, and if we go look at each one of them, I have set layers for each one. So the C4D, if I click on there, is set to the C4D layer. So any layers that you set up in Cinema are going to be right here. Look at the background, and I go to Set Layer. You can see that that's the background layer. And so at this point, it's basically just stacking your layers in the proper order so that everything operates correctly. And this gives you much more flexibility than if I had just put an object buffer on the AE text back in Cinema. A lot more flexibility this way. Now, one other thing I want to mention that I did over here in Cinema is that I went ahead and set up Multipass. 
So I've got my shadow and my ambient occlusion here as well as my RGBA image. When we go back to After Effects, you can see I have my ambient occlusion layer here. And if we go on to Multipass, you can see that that is indeed set up as ambient occlusion. So you can kind of see that when I turn that on and off. But the cool thing about putting these things on their separate layers is that if I click on here now, I can turn each one of these on and off independently. Okay, background gone. You see in the power here? Okay, so I'm going to jump back over to Cinema one more time just to point something out. So I have a plane called Shadow Catcher. And if I turn the visibility of that on, you can see that it's just a plane sitting here. And again, I have the AND. Both of these have external compositing tags on them. And that's because all I want is this position data from Cinema 4D to use over in After Effects. So I'll go back to After Effects. And let me go ahead and just delete all of this. And I'll delete the AND too. Let's go ahead and right click under the BG or background layer and we can create a new layer. New text. Double click that. Type AND. And I'm going to turn that into a 3D layer. If I come to one of my Cineware layers and I scroll down, I can come to this Extract and it's going to extract Cinema 4D scene data. So I click on that. I get my camera. I get my AND which is the position data I'm looking for. And I also get the shadow catcher, which is right there in the middle. So now I have that data and I can use that here in After Effects. So I'm going to go to the beginning of my animation. This is going to recalculate. I want to take a look at the position data for the AND. So I'm going to click U. And you can see all the keyframe data here. So I'm going to select position, and Shift Select to get everything here. And I'm going to do Control or Command C to copy that to the clipboard. Then I'm going to go to the AND. And I'm going to do a Command or Control V to paste that information in there. And if I come over here and go a little further up my timeline, calculating. If I click the AND and click U, it shows me my position data. I'm going to click on Scale. Make sure that it's all highlighted. I'm going to scale that up so that we'll be able to see it. It's pretty small as it comes in. Now if we go down here a little longer in the timeline, there we can see the AND sign. So that's how we take the position data from Cinema 4D and use it here in After Effects. Right now, that's probably not going to work correctly because we don't have it in the proper position here. If we take a look over here, you're going to notice that it's in front of the AE and it actually needs to go down in the stack and be above rocks. So now it's correct there. If we come a little further up, I want to make sure that it's in front of the C4D, and it is. So we're good to go there too. So to get the shadow for the AND, it was basically the same idea. I took the shadow catcher information from Cinema 4D and used it over here and created a solid. And put it into multiply mode. And I actually used the top light that came over from Cinema 4D to cast the shadow over here on the AND sign. So if we take this shadow and we turn it into normal mode, we can see that it's just a plane sitting on the floor. Turn that back to multiply. And then after that, it's all about just setting up your light properties and material properties on the AND and on the shadow catcher so that your light is casting a shadow. Okay, so that about wraps it up. The integration between these two programs is just getting better and better and more powerful.